Hey guys, Doug B here, your average axe wielding hack. Now Fractal recently updated the speaker impedance curve algorithm, and they also updated all the existing speaker curves in the current presets. They also added some more curves to the ones that we already have. Now, of course, that just makes things better for the Axe FX3 because it expands upon its flexibility. But what exactly are speaker impedance curves and why should we care about them? Well, let's dive in and see. I never paid any attention to this particular parameter before because it always confused me. Why is this part of the amp block and not the speaker block? Now, my knowledge of speaker impedance has always been sketchy at best. Back in the day, I started off using a 65 Baseman with the 212 cab that it came with. Then I moved on to a brand new 1973 PV Musician, again with the 612 cabinet that it came with. Yeah, 612 inches in the cabinet. That beast was heavy. After that, I used combo amps, so I never really had to worry about speaker impedance until now. I just figured it was one of those parameters that was best left alone. But then firmware 20.02 beta came out and it had the improved speaker impedance curve algorithm plus new curves. I tried out some of them and started getting a clue what they were all about, but I still needed more info. As usual, the Fractal Forum provided a lot of information on this subject. While doing research for this video, I created a four page document of various notes. The thing I noticed is that they mostly said the same thing in slightly different ways. Without getting all wordy, this is what it boils down to. The speaker impedance curve tells the amp model what type of speaker load it will be connected to. A real tube amp reacts with the speaker that it is connected to. The amp model in the Axe FX3 does not know what it is connected to, so the speaker impedance curve tells the amp model what type of speaker it will be using. Now the best or the most common practice is to use a speaker impedance curve that matches the IR that you'll be using in the cab block. But you don't have to. You won't hurt anything if you use a 1 by 12 inch speaker impedance curve in the amp block and then use a 4 by 10 IR in the cab block. It might sound a little weird, but at least you won't blow up your Axe FX3 in the process. As usual, let your ears be the final judge. One of the forum members posted a link to an article that explains what speaker impedance curves are in more detail, and I'll post a link to it in the description. It gets a bit complex for my poor brain, but some of you may find it interesting. All right, let's put together a preset that uses the same amp in all four channels, but each channel uses a different speaker impedance curve. Then we can create two scenes for each channel in the amp block. One scene will use the matching IR in the cab block, and the other scene will have an IR that is totally different. Then I can demo them with the looper so we can see how they sound. So let's use quick build. Grab the in, grab the out, connect them, now this is going to be a very, very simple preset. It's going to have looper, amp, cab one, cab two, and reverb. Now we'll close quick build and go into scene manager. Now we're going to change the categories to be amp one, cab one, cab two, and reverb one. Now for reverb, we want channel A for all eight scenes. For amp one, we want channel A for scenes one and two, channel B for scenes three and four, channel C for scenes five and six, and channel D for scenes seven and eight. Now for cab one, that's gonna be used in first four scenes. Scene one will use channel A, scene two will use channel B, scene three will use channel C, and scene four will use channel D. Cab two block will be used for scenes five through eight. Five will use channel A, six will use channel B, seven will use channel C, and eight will use channel D. Okay, now we click out of Scene Manager and go to the Amp Block. We're going to use the Diamante Fire, or the Diamante Fire, in all four channels. So let's get that set up. Okay, now we'll click on the Speaker tab. Channel A will use the 1x12 Brit G12T. Channel B will use the 2x12 Two Stone 1265. Channel C will use the 1x12 G12T75. And channel D will use the 4x12 high power Pete T. Now the cab blocks are going to take some work to set up because we have to find an IR that matches the speaker impedance curve and as well as one that is way different. Scene 1 uses the 1x12 Brit G12 curve. There isn't an exact match for it in the cab block, so I'll be using factory 1 number 323, a 1x12 GT57A 
in channel A of the cab one block. Scene two also uses the 1x12 Brit G12T curve, but we want something completely different. So let's use factory two, number 323, a 4x12 1960A 300 watt 414D in channel B of the cab one block. Now I'm gonna speed up the processing for scenes three through eight, so you don't have to watch me go through all of that. But let's just say for scene three, I'm gonna use factory two, number 127. For scene four, I'm gonna use factory one, number 127. For scene five, I'm gonna use factory one, number 323. For scene six, I'm gonna use factory two, number 423. For scene seven, I'm gonna use factory two, number 714. And for scene eight, I'm gonna use factory one, number 714. The reverb block will use the new echo room type in channel A, and that'll be used for all eight scenes. And the only other thing that was changed was the mix was dropped down from 20% to 15%. Okay, I'll go ahead and I'll play a riff and use the looper to record it. Then we'll level the preset using the loop. Next, we'll name the preset and the scenes. We'll save the preset and then run through the scenes. I'll cycle through the scenes and we'll see if we can hear any difference. All right, I'll hit record on the looper and we'll get a riff recorded. Okay, now let's level the preset. I'll play the loop and then we'll adjust the level. Right, now let's name this preset and let's name all the scenes. All right, we named the preset SIC test. Now let's name the scenes. I named scene one, one by 12 Brit G12TM. The M stands for match. In other words, the speaker impedance curve matches the IR. I named the second scene one by 12 Brit G12TNM because it too is using the 1x12 Brit G12T speaker impedance curve, but it is not using a matching IR in the cab block, so the NM stands for not matching. Okay, now that we have the preset named and all the scenes named, let's save this preset. Now what we'll do is we'll start that loop playing and we will cycle through the scenes so we can hear what the difference is between the different speaker impedance curves and how it works with the different cab IRs. <laughs> So there you have it guys, speaker impedance curves for the Axe FX3 explained. Now that was nowhere near as confusing as what I was expecting it to be. On the other hand, that one link that I put in the description, man, that stuff goes into some detail and it went way over my head. I'm gonna have to read it a couple times to let it sink in. Good thing is you do not have to understand that article to understand how to use speaker impedance curves with the Axe FX3. And wasn't it crazy how changing the speaker impedance curves and the cab IRs totally changed the sound of that amp? It was like we had eight different amps there. 
And it was just one. I just gotta love it. All right, guys, next Wednesday, we'll be back at the factory looking at the factory presets and using our good friend, the random number generator to make the choice for us. Now you don't want to miss that. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. All right, guys, see you next Wednesday.